Hey guys, we are here today in Texas and we are making some candles. We're here with Melissa, Becky's sister. We've had her on videos before and I just realized, uh, Melissa, that it's gonna look like you're a single mom because every time we have you on videos, we never see your husband. That's right, he's yeah. actually overseas right now so that he's not here because of that. But he is a <laughs> pastor here in the Dallas area. And so, so we're here making some candles today. So I asked Melissa if she'd show us how to do it. She's gonna show you the steps she takes and then we're gonna show you the supplies that she uses for that process and then also there's going to be a link to be able to buy some of these made by Melissa herself at the end. So we're excited to check this out, see how it's done. Looks like a lot of fun. So here is Melissa. Okay, so we are going to make beeswax and coconut oil, essential oil scented candles. And so it's actually a pretty fun process and pretty simple. Here are the supplies. You just need a large pot and usually you want a pot that you don't care about because beeswax is a little bit harder than other waxes that it's just hard to get out. I use a, co a coconut oil and a beeswax blend. And everyone has a little bit different format. Some people will use palm oil and beeswax. Um, I really like the coconut oil and thanks to Costco, it comes in a large container. I actually do local honey. It can be found here in Josephine, Texas is where I get mine. And I get it from the Sabine Creek Honey Farm. It comes in a pound block, a five pound block, you can get it even in a 25, 30, or even a 50 pound block sometimes. And then I use essential oils to scent. Um, the reason why I do that is because fragrances are not really healthy for you. And so I like to use non-toxic, um, natural-based products um, in my home. And so that's the reason why I use essential oils. Essential oils are a little bit different when it comes to um, making candles. The scent isn't going to be as strong and it gets really pricey. And then we have our wicks we can do something that's already been put together, which is something I enjoy getting because it's easier. Or you can actually do your own. Finished product will look like this. I use mason jars because they're just easier and they have measurements on the side, which is helpful for me to get the right measurements of each oil and, and beeswax. And then I use a pitcher to combine everything together when I throw the essential oils in there as well. And it's easier to pour into the candles. The last thing I use is I use amber glass jars. The reason why I use these, because they're really pretty and I love pretty things. So it actually helps the scent stay in there a little bit longer. So those are the supplies that I use. You kind of have to find what works for you. And this is what I have found works really great for me and the supplies are really easy to find. And the reason why I use beeswax, I know there's other people out there that use soy, but I prefer beeswax because it is more natural and it actually releases negative ions in the air which actually help reduce dust, mold, and even dander. And that's another reason why I use essential oils is because you're actually getting the benefits from beeswax but you're also getting the benefits from the essential oil. So those, um, definitely kind of combine them and it actually makes a really great product. Alright, well I want to know more about that and where we get that from. So let's go check out the honey farm and see where the beeswax comes from. Alright, we are here at the honey farm. You ready? Yeah! Let's go see some honey, some beeswax here at the Sabine Creek Honey Farm. Let's go check it out. You know how much you need? Four pounds if you have Four pounds if I have it? When I try to find a local place that do beeswax, I called around Sunnyvale, I called in different areas, and a lot of them just didn't want to mess with it. Yeah, like, most of them don't. Yeah, it's but... just one of those things that we've been doing it for so long that, right. you know, it just take, it takes a little while, but I mean, yeah. it's, it's not too bad. I mean, like I said, I just fill it up in the morning, let it start, start melting. By the end of the day, it's done. I start putting oh. it in the big blocks. So I'll get big blocks like this size right here. This is about between about 25 and 30 pounds. How do people find you for, do you guys have a website? Or how do you... um, we do have a partial website, sabrinecreekhoneyfarm.com, but most of the people find me on Facebook. How far will you send it? Anywhere? I send it anywhere. Okay. We send some honey all the way to New York. Hi. Yeah. You're ready to some beekeeping. That was good. Okay. How does it feel? Good. What does the bee say? Bzzz. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> 
All right, we are back from the bee farm and we are ready to make some candles. Let's see how this is done. What I found is the easiest way to chop down a huge block of beeswax is actually freezing it. And once you freeze it, it actually does not affect the beeswax. This comes already wrapped and I just throw it in the freezer overnight. And then once you pull it out, I just put it in a bag because I'm gonna chop it with a hammer. Um, and I wish this was the one I could win from White House on the Hill, but it is not. Woo! Plain old hammer. But maybe you will win, who knows? So sure, I don't have it in pellet form, but you can still make it in the small. So we are going to start burning down the beeswax. You can see there's tiny little pieces. Um, so I just throw those all into the mason jar. It smells good. Smell that? Smell the vision. So how I burn the wax is I get this large pot. So basically, you want the water to be enough where it hits all the wax because it will help it burn it down. It will float if it's in, not in the right position. Okay. You do have to make sure it's in the right spot in the pan. So the first time I did make candles, I had it in this and it, <laughs> it flipped and all my wax oh. went into the water. So this one will actually sit perfectly in the middle. So usually I can fit like two or three in here without them tipping over. And so I usually start with the beeswax and then once the beeswax is all melted, I will melt the coconut oil. When you have your beeswax melting, I usually wait till later to put the coconut oil in because it does melt so much quicker. And everyone has a different blend. You know, some people will use 75-25 on the beeswax and coconut oil. Some will use um, even less than that. So there's different ways of doing it. There's definitely not a one best way. Um, you kind of have to figure out what you like and uh, what works for you. Vitacost brand. I found that they're they're pure and the cost is the most cost effective that I have found. And and so these have been actually really good in my candles, minus the now. That was just um, a cheaper one at the time. And so today I am making a bergamot, lime, and grapefruit candle. This actually is, it smells really good. And so you get to really have fun putting the scents together. That's kind of the fun process of trying to figure out how many drops to put in each candle, what scents to combine. And sometimes it's hard for someone to imagine what like cypress and grapefruit would smell like. But once you put those two together, they smell really good and they're just fresh, they're clean, and they smell so much better than synthetic fragrances. But today I'm excited to, to put these three together and have you guys take a smell. And this one's the, the wax? This is the beef wax. See how it's already Kind of solidifying on the sides. Mm -hmm. Put these on to make the wick stay in the center. Oh, cool. And that is it. And so you just let it sit for about 24 to 48 hours or longer. The longer that you let it sit, the scents will actually, the scents of the essential oils will be stronger. You cut down the wick. I do about a fourth of an inch on the wick, maybe even an eighth. Depends on how much you want to leave. You can find these at itsy.com. Just look under Deep Forest Wax Co. as in company. And it's a brand new shop. I've been doing it for friends and family for a while, but decided to open it up. And then 10% of the profit of these candles goes to the orphan and the poor in the forest of Southeast Asia. And that will help with water, um, food, and other needed supplies. Well, thanks for showing us how to make candles. Thanks for having us. Make sure you make comments below if you have any questions for Melissa. 
and go on her Etsy account to buy some candles for this Christmas. It makes great stocking stuffers. And we will see you later from Texas.